Notice from the Foundation Records and Information Security Administration. The information within the containment procedures and description are outdated and has been marked for revision. Maria Jones, Director, RAISA. Item number SCP-307-DE. Object Class Euclid. Continua. Item is drastically affected due to the disappearance of a specific part of the anomaly. Special Containment Procedures SCP-307-DE must be stored within a standardized containment cell, measuring 4 m x 4 m x 6 m, in Site DE-4. An ordinary bed is present in the cell for research purposes. SCP-307-DE designates a seemingly normal closet consisting of faux ebony with the measurements 1 m x 1 m x 2 m. The object features two doors that grant the user access to the inside, which consists of two compartments. Five shelves for clothing on the left and empty space on the right, except for a clothes rail. The object's anomalous properties only become apparent at night, where people sleeping in the same room as SCP-307-DE will experience severe anxiety related to the contents of SCP-307-DE. Tests with remotely controlled gripper arms have also shown that the object cannot be opened at night. SCP-307-DE can be used like a normal closet from sunrise to sunset. Thus far, no source for the anomalous properties of SCP-307-DE could be ascertained. Longer exposure to the object results in insomnia and ultimately death by heart attack. Discovery SCP-307-DE was discovered inside of a residence in whose inhabitants complained about nocturnal knocking noises in the child's room. The Rutt family Furthermore, they missed their 16-year-old son, whom the local authorities were unable to find. Pedestrians who were walking in view of the house at night could see the light flickering from outside and multiple handprints forming onto the window. According to the parents, they were unable to enter the room at night. Eventually, after a civilian reported to have seen a son in his room staring at them through the window with a foreboding grin, Agent Freud visited the family under the false identity of a policeman and placed cameras within the child's room without their knowledge, but they recorded no unusual events the following night. The father ultimately decided to spend the night in the child's room, where he was exposed to the effects of SCP-307-DE. After the father informed Agent Freud about his experience, the latter requested two other agents for securing the object and treating the parents with Class A amnestics. Incident 307-DE-01 During a containment breach of SCP-DE, a large-scale fire occurred that engulfed SCP-307-DE cell, neutralizing it before security personnel could extinguish the flames. An undamaged Ouija board was discovered among the burnt remains, which could point to a spectral entity. On the right, the corpse of a child lay, which subsequent examination revealed to be the Rutt families. Incident 307-DE-02 When Agent Freud was unable to step into his bed, in Site DE-4 one day, after the aforementioned incident, he wanted to report to his superiors. However, according to his own testimony, he could not open the door. The next day, Agent Freud failed to appear at his workplace, and security personnel discovered him crouching in the fetal position in his bedroom. He recalled the events during a psychological evaluation. Interview of Agent Freud Present Parties Dr. Von Stein Psychologist Agent Freud Hello, Mr. Freud. I'm here to help you work through the events of yesterday. My superiors ordered me to record our conversation. Is that alright with you? I don't care. But let's begin. Could you tell me what happened last night? I… I can try. Some minutes pass before Agent Freud answers. I only wanted to go to bed and sleep, but then this fear suddenly arose within me. All my thoughts were focused on what was under my bed. 
Could you bring yourself to look under the bed? No, I felt almost stunned, like in one of those sleep paralysis, yet I stood upright. Also, everything beneath and around my bed appeared way darker than usual. Then this cursed voice began to speak. Someone talked to you? Yes. At first it was only some childish whimpering, then concrete words. It yelled that I would be guilty and it wanted to go home. Can you make any sense of this? Neither yesterday nor today. I don't like to think about it anyways. The thing seemed to understand that I didn't get it, so it grabbed my wrist and pulled me beneath the bed, after which I couldn't see anything for a while. What did you see afterwards? Walls began to form around me, and I eventually sat inside a bedroom. When I attempted to stand up, I was abruptly pulled back and saw a boy. He carried handcuffs, one side of which was strapped around my neck. Some more minutes later, the door of the room opened and the father of the boy we found in the pile of ash came inside. This bastard won't leave my memory any time soon. Explain bastard. What did he do to you? God forbid, had he done something to me, I wouldn't be ready for this conversation yet. He walked over to the bed of the boy who looked exactly like the one who chained me, lifted him up and walked away. Then, let's call him Ghost, so we can distinguish them. The ghost pulled me along by the chain. We then found ourselves in a larger bathroom, where the father… Uh, you're not obligated to mention it if it is still so difficult for you at the moment. Well, I could only open my eyes again once he had reattached his belt. I see. Do you think that this is the reason why the ghost took such drastic measures for a vendetta? Possibly. Afterward, Agent Freud's bed was burnt, which resulted in the events described occurring at a bed in a room closer to the exit. All furniture was relocated to a fireproof containment cell. Due to a lack of concrete evidence, no legal action could be taken against the parents. Item number SCP-009-DE Object Class Euclid Special Containment Procedures Newly discovered specimens of SCP-009-DE-1 are to be torn down as soon as possible. MTF-DE-9-T Tankwort is currently monitoring social networks and is investigating reports about vehicles under the influence of SCP-009-DE-2 to locate and destroy new specimens. Specimens that are contained for research purposes do not require any maintenance. Except for tests, no motor may be operated filled with SCP-009-DE-2. SCP-009-DE-1 describes a series of automated petrol stations. Instances of SCP-009-DE-1 appear spontaneously on the territory of the Federal Republic of Germany. See Addendum 009-DE-2. All instances of SCP-009-DE-1 have the same appearance and have the same components. One unit consists of a price mast, three petrol pumps, each with a customer terminal, up to two hoses and nozzles and a roof. Various products and services are advertised on all components of SCP-009-DE-1. The design of SCP-009-DE-1's customer terminal differs from that of conventional devices. All credit and bank cards are accepted without exception, as long as they are approved and adequately covered. It is also possible to use cash of any internationally recognized currency for payment. The device works otherwise like a usual customer terminal. SCP-009-DE-1 has a large selection of fuels, here and after collectively referred to as SCP-009-DE-2 some of which are normally not available in the Federal Republic of Germany. The SCP-009-DE-1 dispensers can dispense all offered variants of SCP-009-DE-2 without measurable impurities, although each of them has only two hoses and nozzles. However, it seems that if Petrol Pump 1 only delivers diesel fuels, while Petrol Pump 2 provides all other fuels, 
with the exception of a significantly higher density. All types of SCP-009-DE2 are physically and chemically identical to their non-anomalous counterparts. SCP-009-DE2 powered engines that are not used for locomotion start up, but the engine stops almost immediately. Vehicle engines operate with SCP-009-DE2, on the other hand, show increased performance initially, but side effects occur with continuous use. These side effects gradually affect the vehicle in three stages. Stage 1 One to two weeks after the first use of SCP-009-DE2, the engine power drops back to the normal level, the weight of the vehicle increases slightly. Stage 2 Three to five weeks after the onset of Stage 1, engine performance drops to a below average level. Dents start to form on the surface of the vehicle, increasing its mass. Stage 3 Four to six weeks after the onset of Stage 2, engine performance drops even further. Engine, air conditioning, and vehicle electronics become susceptible to malfunctions. The bumps expand and start to cover headlights and intake openings. During this process, the mass of the vehicle continues to increase until either the intake openings are completely covered, the chassis collapses under the weight or, in the case of a watercraft, its buoyancy is no longer sufficient to keep it afloat. The highest weight ever documented was reached by a Bell AZ-75710 large dump truck and was measured at 1,598.3 tons. The duration of each stage varies between vehicles. In addition, SCP-009-DE2 side effects can be prevented by driving the vehicle a lot and transporting heavy loads with it. If an affected vehicle is operated with fuel other than SCP-009-DE2 for a sufficient period of time, it will gradually return to its standard state. The reversion takes place in all cases, no matter what stage the vehicle is in. However, should such a vehicle be operated again with SCP-009-DE2, the side effects set in much faster and more violently. Another way to neutralize the side effects is to replace affected parts with unaffected ones. However, these new parts will also be affected by SCP-009-DE2 side effects if they are used to continue to operate the vehicle afterwards. Instances of SCP-009-DE1 appear on busy roads at night, without warning. Typical places of appearance are rest stops or vacant lots. The materialization process has never been documented, since the time and the exact location of their occurrence are impossible to predict at the moment. Once they have appeared, they remain in their place indefinitely. It is also possible to find several instances in one place, probably to serve a larger number of customers at the same time. SCP-009-DE-1 attracts customers by adjusting the price of all of its fuels so that they are significantly cheaper at any time than any other gas station within a 60 km radius. If a copy suffers damage that does not render the customer terminal and both petrol pumps unusable, it will return to its original condition within one nanosecond at midnight. If a specimen is damaged to such an extent that its customer terminal and both petrol pumps are no longer functional, it loses all of its anomalous properties. To date, the investigation of contained specimens has provided only limited information. It is unknown how SCP-009-DE-1 gathers information about fuel prices, which bank receives the funds that are transferred to its customer terminal, and where it obtains SCP-009-DE-2 from, since no destroyed instance so far had an underground tank. It was also not possible to find out how cash leaves the customer terminal. Coin-shaped GPS trackers which are inserted into the coin slot of SCP-009-DE-1's customer terminal, simply remain in it and, in contrast to real coins, can be recovered when the terminal is destroyed. Addendum 009-DE-1 Newly discovered specimens of SCP-009-DE-1 are now able to output electricity for electric vehicles and have a corresponding device in each petrol pump. The electricity designated SCP-009-DE-3, has the same anomalous properties as SCP-009-DE-2. Where SCP-009-DE-1 gets its electricity from is unknown. Addendum 009-DE-2 Observations show 
that the rate at which new instances of SCP-009-DE-1 appear has been increasing steadily in recent years. There are now SCP-009-DE-1 sightings in several Western and Central European countries, as well as Canada and the United States. Item number SCP-190-DE Object Class Euclid Secure Containment Procedures Direct containment of SCP-190-DE-1 and Dash-2 is currently considered too costly and counterproductive. They are allowed to continue their business on the condition that they inform the Foundation staff at all times where and when they will appear next. They are also required to keep the special characteristics of SCP-190-DE-3 and the nature and origin of their non-terrestrial natural resources secret. SCP-190-DE-3 is to be equipped with a GPS tracker, and all quality and health inspections are to be carried out by Foundation certified personnel. SCP-190-DE is to be monitored at all times by Foundation personnel, but not to be informed of this fact. If one or both entities actively attempt to avoid being monitored by the Foundation, the Midgard Protocol is to be enacted. SCP-190-DE are two entities with a humanoid appearance. SCP-190-DE-1 has the appearance of a 40-year-old, 196cm tall muscular man with long blonde hair and a full beard. SCP-190-DE-2 has the appearance of a 40-year-old woman with a size of 179cm. SCP-190-DE-2 is bald, but conceals it with a brown wig. Both claim to be the Nordic gods Thor and Sif, but this has not yet been conclusively proven or refuted. SCP-190-DE-1 and Dash-2 operate a small mobile kebab joint herein after referred to as SCP-190-DE-3, with the name the Turkish Walhalla, that offers dishes and drinks corresponding to such an establishment. SCP-190-DE-1 always works at the front of the counter, serving and talking to customers, while SCP-190-DE-2 takes care of meal preparation. Although SCP-190-DE-3 looks like a normal snack car painted in white, it has several special features. Instead of a vehicle, SCP-190-DE is towed by two domestic goats, Capra Agagris Hercus, which can reach speeds of up to 70 km per hour. DNA tests show that they are completely normal goats. These extraordinary abilities are readily accepted and ignored by bystanders, presumably due to an antimimetic effect. Furthermore. SCP-190-DE-3 has larger internal dimensions than what should logically be possible with its external dimensions. Thus, it has a usable area of approximately 70 meters squared, which is occupied by kebab grills, ovens, refrigerators, and other objects necessary for a kebab joint. However, some of them are arranged in such a way that this spatial discrepancy cannot be determined by outside glances. SCP-190-DE-3 is also capable of spontaneously disappearing with a flash of light and reappearing at another location. The time between disappearance and reappearance does not follow any laws that are apparent to the Foundation. SCP-190-DE-1 explained in this context that they were still visiting other worlds in between. SCP-190-DE-1's and SCP-190-DE-2's DNA is human but both show a much higher body performance and vitality, but only a normal human intellect. It was observed how SCP-190-DE-1 and Dash-2 work consistently for a whole week without signs of fatigue. Tests on their resistance to various influences have not yet been carried out, but both entities are immune to narcotics in all doses and weak poisons used so far. SCP-190-DE-1 has asked to refrain from such tests in the future, otherwise things would become, quote, really uncomfortable, unquote. Due to their physical strength and resilience, the Foundation expects high losses in its attempted containment, 
and is refraining from doing so for the time being due to its peaceableness, willingness to cooperate, and desire to remain undiscovered. SCP-190-DE has so far traveled around northern and central Europe to sell its food. Both entities speak the languages of all countries they visit fluently, and apparently know the local laws for the commercial distribution of food, the keeping of goats and behavior in local traffic. It has not yet been observed that any of the entities deliberately broke any of these laws. Although SCP-190-DE sells ordinary foods and beverages, it also offers dishes with a range of ingredients whose biological source cannot be found on Earth. Before the Foundation contained them, they praised it as, quote, the best of all nine realms, unquote. Discovery SCP-190-DE was discovered when Foundation webcrawler flagged the finding in the database of the Baden-Württemberg Ministry for Rural Areas and Consumer Protection, which stated that the meat used by SCP-190-DE could not be clearly attributed to an animal. Also, SCP-190-DE-3's actually impossible dimensions were mentioned. Foundation agents were sent to investigate the case. Interview with SCP-190-DE-1 Note: This is the first interview with SCP-190-DE-1. Agent Wilder stepped up to SCP-190-DE-3 and started talking to SCP-190-DE-1. Due to the late hour, no other customers were present. Begin log. Hello. Nice weather we're having this evening. Oh, yeah, can't complain. What will it be? I'm not here because I'm hungry. During a food inspection, very strange meat and vegetables were found here. Can you tell me anything about it? Are you sure? We make every effort to prepare everything properly, and none of our customers have complained as of yet. I'm afraid it doesn't work that way. Can I have your name for the protocol? Yes, of course. I'm Thorsten. Thorsten Nordman, with TH. Okay, tell me. Where do you get your meat from? Oh, here and there, where dealers just offer something at a good price. Also applies to the vegetables and other ingredients. But we also go hunting for some things ourselves. Of course, only where it is allowed. Are you allowed to hunt? Yes, of course. I got a special hunting license. Take a look. SCP-190-DE-1 pulls out a wallet, apparently made of goat skin, and pulls out the said document to show it to Agent Wilder. Hmm. Everything seems to be fine with that. What kind of animals do you hunt? Oh, well, wild boars, deer, partridges, lindworms. Lindworms? Those don't exist here, you moron! You're not helping, Sif! Wait a minute. Sif? You call yourself Thorsten? Let me guess. The name of your goat has something to do with teeth grinding, right? SCP-190-DE-1 looks embarrassed. Well… Mr. Nordman, I have been working in this milieu for some time, and I have to say you are a lousy liar. Who are you really? Well, uh, to be frank, you know, I, uh… Just tell him you're the god of thunder, jeez! Sif, who would buy that? I would. Wait, what? Well, my employer deals with people like you. I actually came because of the meat and the big car inside, but are you really Thor? Oh, what the heck. Yes, I am Thor, god of thunder, strength, healing, and oak trees. Hmm. How does a god of thunder get to operate a kebab joint? Everyone needs money to live. Gods are no exception. And nowadays, nobody really pays any tribute to us as guardians. You know, with all those Christians. Why a fast food joint? And why Turkish food? Well. I tried the weather service first, but I didn't get through the trial period. Then I wanted to become a grocer together with Sif. I wanted to sell organic food exclusively. That's why our shop was called Ecothor. But people preferred to go to the supermarket and then I had to shut down. All I had left was my chariot. 
One day I went to buy kebab to eat something else, and there I had the flash of genius. A Greek colleague of mine had opened a gourmet restaurant in the Aegean Sea, so I thought I could do that too. Instead of becoming the god of thunder, I would become the god of kebab. I had my car pimped out by the dwarves, and since then the money had been flowing again. Really? Just like that? Hey, sleep in a goat cart with your wife for five years with no roof over your head because your father kicked you out. Then you'll get really desperate. I had to put my last savings into this place. I see. This thing with your father. None of your damn business. Alright. Why are you hiding from the public? As Thorsten Nordman, I mean. Do you know how embarrassing that would be if the veneer found out that the once mighty Thor has to operate a kebab joint to keep himself above water? Please. That's the last thing I want. I see. If you like, my organization can support you. For certain conditions, of course. What kind of conditions? Well, you'd have to take all non-terrestrial ingredients off the menu, or at least hide them somehow attach a tracking device to your car, and keep us informed of where you're going. In return, we'll cover such annoying stuff like health inspections and food inspections for you. Hmm. Doesn't sound too bad. But I can't do without the ingredients. That's what makes the customers come in. If you wish, I could send you a few specialists to negotiate the exact conditions with you. I'm sure we can work something out. What's the deal? What if we refuse? I'm afraid we'll have to take you into custody. You are gods. You could do all sorts of damage. Listen, will you? I am the protector of Midgard, so I will protect this world and not destroy it. By my honor. As far as I'm concerned, lock me up. But if you as so much as touch Sif, I'm going to get really angry. At least listen to these people. We can still get out of the deal. All right, honey. End log. Closing addendum. SCP-190-DE-1-2 agreed with Foundation representatives not to advertise their ingredients in an obvious manner, but to continue to use them after thorough analysis, and agreed to the terms set forth in the security measures. Foundation agents monitor the joint without SCP-190-DE's knowledge to intervene in the event of an information leak. Addendum 190-DE-1 Note: The following recording is a phone call received by SCP-190-DE-1 on September 5, 2017. Due to the nature of the recording, it was not possible to record what was said by the other party. The telephone conversation was conducted in Ancient Nordic and translated for better understanding. It should be noted that words were used that do not exist in Ancient Norse. The meaning of these words were therefore inferred from the context. Begin Log SCP-190-DE-1's phone is ringing. It looks apparently annoyed at the displayed number before answering the call. That you have the guts to call me. Don't pretend as if I forgot that. Uh-huh. No. Business is good. I'm not giving up on this now. It makes me look ridiculous, alright? Big word from someone who rides an eight-legged horse. Hey, I still make more money than you. Yeah, what do you expect? There are now millions of duplicates of Dropnir, so the price is going down. That's your problem. Then put the dogs on a diet. Like there's going to be so much food on your table. Stop drinking meat and eat something decent. Speaking of which, was the tree doctor there? Ah. Just a regular mushroom infection, I say. But no, the dear sir must dismiss it as magical. Can you fix that? Oh. I'm still not going there. No. Oh, father. I don't care who slays the snake. I was supposed to die, remember? Then ask for Indra in India. 
he'll be more than willing to do that. This guy's trained for all that kind of stuff, and he even has a club to do it. I realize it's not a hammer, but take what you can get. Look, you can do this thing, but without me, is that clear? Leave my kids out of this! Yes. You'd better. Loki? No, I haven't seen him. Ask the Olympians. He did what? Oh, the commies won't be very happy about that. Me? What are you thinking? He can catch those critters himself. Goodbye. End log. Addendum 190-DE-2 In the following, the steps of Protocol Midgard are described. 1. All Foundation coverage is withdrawn, and tips on violations in SCP-190-DE-3 are passed to the local health department. 2. Should SCP-190-DE wish to evade the health check, or reject the decision of the health commissioners to prevent the closure of their store, Step 1 is to be repeated in each new city where they appear. In addition, the kebab joint must be defamed through social media to force closure. If SCP-190-DE does not cooperate again by this time, the kebab joint must be closed, and all entities taken into custody by MTF-DE-6 Delta Das Aufgebot, i.e. the Draft, with the possible support of several units of MTF-DE-4 Beta. D. Vertigader. All of them must be transferred to Site DE-17 and placed in containment. Item number… whoa… I uh, uh, don't know… Um, SCP-044-DEJ or something like this. For me… Don't care is a wet and loud fart. Object class safe. Nah, this stuff's never safe. Euclid. Never enough. Keter. Nay, these headaches are never, ever Keter. Apollyon. Yeah. Yes, that's how my skull is rumbling. Special Containment Procedures. For God's sake, never allow Dr. Heinrich to drink from this distillery. And don't touch this stuff. And especially do not drink it. Don't even think about drinking that or to even touch it. Don't even taste or sip for a bit. This stuff is most surely indestructible. As intense as this stuff is, it will easily burn a hole inside the Earth's atmosphere if it only comes near any fire and it's flushed down the toilet. By dumping it through the sewage system, it could probably eradicate half of the ecosystem. It is best to keep it in Dr. Heinrich's alcohol closet, as far away from any life forms as possible. There is no access to anybody. It's for our own good. And do not even think about using this stuff as a detergent. This stuff easily etches a hole all the way down to the underground village of the Mole Men. In case of a booze party, I mean a containment breach, the site housing it is to be equipped with a stock of 20 tons of headache pills, 10 tons of gastrointestinal tea, 20,000 liters of coffee, 300 glasses of rolled meatballs, and several bottles of SCP-014-DEJ. And please dim the light of the entire site. And only whisper when making announcements through the speakers, okay? Description Blah, I, I really can't take it anymore. SCP-044-DEJ consists of Satan's color thinner, I mean, um, a snops that has been produced inside Dr. Heinrich's own distillery hall, brewing chamber, reconstructed garage. Is this even legal? And hygienic? If not, it should be banned immediately. He states a recipe that has existed in its family for generations, 
and is passed on, which is doubted as this stuff can surely annihilate a whole family generation. According to his testimony, the taste constitutes a mixture of apple featuring the sylvan flavor of juniper and a slight aftertaste of wild blackthorn with a touch of mint and citrus at the end. Think the guy is anomalous, that he's really been getting this stuff down unscathed for years. But if you tip that stuff, you know it's nothing but a burning sensation in the throat, like an inhaled fart of SCP-006-DE. It was impossible to be scientifically researched, as, after the wild party, no one was able to remember it, as it causes an insane blackout features co cognitive amnestic properties. There are recordings, but they are extremely embarrassing and are to be deleted immediately. No recordings of such an event exist. The O4 decided that all requests involving supposed recordings pose an immediate reason for termination. The day following consumption, one has a hangover that feels as if SCP-190-DE-1 jumped Molnir first inside your face. You will feel extreme signs of an alcohol intoxication, as well as skull-bursting headaches, high sensitivity the high sensitivity to high all kinds of light and loud all sorts of sounds. A continuing felt need of puking all former, present, and future meals from now until infinity, strong vomiting, gastrointestinal pains, and, and, and thingy, uh, what was his name? Lack of concentration as well as the difficulty in finding the right words. Discovery I really wish it wouldn't have been discovered in the first place. On the occasion of Mr. Heinrich's 50th birthday, he produced several tiny bottles of the pipe cleaner from hell SCP -DEJ, and had sent these to multiple sites. They were distributed to site they were distributed to staff, at least to all the poor piggies who are able to drink alcohol. Pregnant, for example, have come away empty-handed, the lucky ones. The next day, a majority of staff could barely recall what happened. All of them showed signs of high alcohol intoxication, and several alarms were caused by containment breaches occurring in multiple sites. Fortunately, all sentient anomalies were way too groggily after consuming that stuff to even attempt scramming. The effects of SCP-044-DEJ prevented an escape of the anomalies. Due to this, a reclassification of Thaumiel is currently pending approval. No! No, no, no! No! Experiment log, um, event log. Some log. Close that back up! <sighs> some scientists thought it would be funny to treat some anomalies to a few glasses of SCP-044-DEJ, as drunkards are always a laughing matter. During the celebrations, due to observational purposes, several probes of SCP-044-DEJ were handed out to SCPs, with the results being documented. SCP-289-DE It is theorized that the Great Bazoo threw a really big party, as he was found inside his cell together with an out-of-place lampshade on his head, multiple penis drawings on his face, <coughs> an inflatable rubber pig under his right arm, the Mask Singer trophy under his left arm. We have no clue from where he got it, but we sure hope that he will return it someday and an oversized pink crumpled lady's panties in his crotch awake the next day. <laughs> Following his awakening, he gushingly regurgitated so damn huge amounts of paper streamers, confetti, and sweets that scientists assumed SCP-275-DE would be required to get the site clean again. SCP-275-DE Forget what I just said. The wild vacuum cleaner. The object is currently caught inside a circle, 
in which it vomits confetti, which it re-inhales just to vomit it once more to re-inhale it to vomit it. Uh, SCP-148-DE Following the events, SCP-148-DE was located inside an empty plastic cup with it having acquired a blue-green tint. Later then, it slowly and trembly crawled out of the cup before it vomited its own mass, from which a really sweet blue slime baby, a small duplicate of the latter, was formed. Wow, so that's how they're created. The proposal of calling it Baby Blue was denied. SCP-171-DE SCP-171-DE was discovered in a cell, where it repeatedly vomited its organs, with it pushing the latter back into its abdomen, but just to vomit them back out. Statement by SCP-171-DE I don't have enough livers and kidneys for such a… Damn. Why do I also still have so many bladders? Every single one is full. Fuck. Every one of my brains is killing me. Hey. SCP 046 DE The Fleshy Wire Girl. SCP 046 DE did not leave its place of containment. Instead of attacking everything that makes any noises, like it usually does, it holds its meat strands against the head and emits pain-filled, whiny sounds, with it not going after the source of noise. I believe it prefers a state of stillness. Understandable. SCP-011-DE No guys, not this day. My savings booming. How did you even manage to insert that stuff into the computer? Just click on no, okay? SCP-031-DE The last lucky victim <clears throat> affected subject described SCP-031-DE as an unvarnished, unkept woman with a hungover face, dressed in a kitten pajama, with it holding a big mug of chamomile tea in her right and a warming bottle in her right hand, which she held against her abdomen. She asked him to get over it fast so she can swiftly go back to sleep. The vision of SCP-031-DE described the affected subject as a lifespan of 75 years, in which she either slept and snored like a thousand sawmills, whined about head and stomach ache, or spent several hours on the toilet and emitting quote-unquote sounds from hell. This presents the first known case, wherein the affected subject never had a feeling of being betrayed unless the toilet is paid inclusively. SCP-272-DE I'm surely no biologist, but is it healthy if a shark swims with an abdomen up? SCP-262-DE It was possible to find out that the effect of SCP-044-DEJ was so severe, SCP-262-DE is still affected, even when it is already shifted between several animal bodies. Remark. It was not cool to give SCP-044-DEJ to SCP-262-DE for the sole purpose of, and I quote, imitating this scene from Animals Are Beautiful People, where all animals are so laughably drunk on those fermenting fruits. I, the Ethics Committee, and especially the Zoological Wings cleaning team, have a few bones to pick with you. 4 SCP-116-DE SCP-116-DE was not located at its containment site the morning after the incident. After tracing its GPS sensor, it was found on a nearby military training area sitting between an R emergency vehicle and a Leopard 2 tank, with it having a cigarette on its cooler. We are not eager to know how. It was not possible to ascertain what happened. But judging from SCP-116-DE's reaction, it had not been a pleasant situation for it either. SCP-258-DE During the binge drinking, the festivities, 
The series of experiments A shy, blonde, neatly dressed woman appeared in the office of Site DE wearing a black business blazer and showing great similarities to SCP 258 DE. She introduced herself as Elizabeth and handed out an application portfolio to present staff with the intention of applying herself for the Foundation. Dr. Heinrich, who was way too drunk, who was unable to recognize SCP 258 DE, served the sweet blondie with tight ass a small glass of SCP 044 DEJ. What she initially rejected, due to it not drinking alcohol, but X consumed it in one sip, following further prompting and attempted persuasion by Dr. Heinrich. She silently stood around for some seconds before saying, Fuck it, I'm going to get myself a porn magazine, burning the application documents via a lighter and disappeared through a portal from the site. Oh, right. This moment that explains everything. Anyways, shit happens. SCP-133-DE Following a consumption of SCP-044-DEJ, SCP-133-DE went with SCP-255-DE, also affected, to its containment chamber, where it remained unobserved for several minutes. Subsequently, loud moaning, screams, and other unidentifiable sounds were emitted coming from the chamber's door. <laughs> MTFDE 7 E 7 L Freed Retarders. The last remaining task force of the site was called to the containment chamber shortly thereafter in order to prevent even worse things from happening. As they entered the chamber, though, the team discovered Rat and the Beast, the two anomalies playing Mouse Tearoff. The sounds from SCP-133-DE, who proved to be the crappy loser, and both were unable to reach an agreement on whether Ratatouille actually contained rat racistic statements. Present staff was unsure whether they should be relieved or disappointed about the situation. You know what? I'm not getting paid enough for this. Fuck me, folks. I'll be going home now. I need a damn coffee. Item number. Okay, um, this is where the number of the SCP goes, right? Yep. SCP, insert any number here, DEJ. That's not a real number. It's a placeholder. You told me something about placeholders just now, didn't you? Object class. And, um, what is the SCP, I guess? Ah, great. That's not an object class. Yes, but you told me I can use a placeholder. Yeah, but not the object class. Oh, I don't care. Oh, fuck it. Just write the special containment procedures. Okay. Special containment procedures. Alright, this is gonna be hard. Now I gotta write how you keep it locked up, yeah? Yes. You have to write how it is contained. It has to be contained with a sponge. Well, you could be more specific. Yeah, yeah, I could do this. The sponge has to work. No, no, no. You have to specifically write why the sponge has to work. The sponge has to work so you can make the thing wet. But why do you have to make it wet? Come on! What else do I have to say? I'll leave it here. Description. Here I have to write what it is? Yeah, and you'll have to do this part on your own, because I'm going to go grab a copy. I can do this. It's big and colorful. It's stupid and will not negotiate peacefully. It can shoot something that is red and hurts. It swallows kids and hides in big potted plants. It can spread out a kind of virus that turns everyone into zombies and makes them spineless. 
and it can do magic. It controls spells like Awada Kadapra and kills its enemies. It can also change its speed. And it has a giant eye that can hypnotize people. I'm back. Your article is very… special. And why is this thing so powerful? I thought I could write what I want. Yeah, but how would the Foundation contain it? No idea. You guys could do everything. No, we can't. Just keep writing, okay? Yeah, alright. But I'll add something. It manipulates humans so that they say their innermost feelings. This sentence is upgradable. Yes, but it's good enough for me. Discovery I don't need you here. I, if you say so. The thingamabob fell into coma on the 5th of October, and then got brought into the Foundation, I believe. And how's it looking? I did my best. You don't say stuff like, I believe. You had to be sure. Okay then, thanks for the info. Addendum Can I write an interview? Sure, just put it in a box. Hello. Hello! Oh no! Please do not hypnotize me! No, I will not, because I have a sponge. What the… How the hell would a sponge keep it from doing that? And what kind of name is Poopa? Psh, I have to concentrate! Oh yeah! So I was gonna ask why you're so great. Because I love this sponge! Can I have a look? Sure. And how is it? It is… crap. Dude, how many times do I have to say this? And why is it SCP type any number here DEJ instead of SCP insert any number here DEJ? Come on, go back to your room and read this document here. <laughs>